What is happening, crew? Brent back here with another Blockchain 5. Today we are talking about tokenization. Uh, wrote down how I like to think about it. There are so many different ways to look at uh, tokenization and uh, try to define it. And also different ways uh, to look at tokens uh, for thousands of years now. Uh, again, the Blockchain 5. We're talking about encryption, decentralization, immutability, tokenization, and distribution in this series. And just trying to get uh, kind of the big ideas out there and really explain as to why I particularly care about crypto and blockchain technology and how I do think it is revolutionary and uh, incredible uh, in terms of trade and how we're going to do things in the future. And it's something that I definitely love to learn about and I definitely want to share about um, so that hopefully I can make it simple, help you guys learn something in it. Uh, so how I like to think of tokenization or how I like to break it down and define it, uh, the process of transforming ownership and rights of an asset into digital form. We're going to go a little bit deeper in on that uh, in a little bit here. And... Uh, a token. So we hear uh, coins and tokens all the time. Breaking down a token to me is an asset that allows the value and information to be transferred, stored, and verified through the blockchain. So when we're talking about um, these cryptocurrencies and uh, the digitization of assets, um, this is the what I'm, I'm discussing here in the asset. So an asset that allows the value and information to be transferred. Um, and tokenization being taking uh, from an idea to a hard object and transforming and, and um, creating a token to represent its value. Let's get in a little bit deeper on all that. Let's get it going. Okay, so why do we want to digitize assets? Well, for one, it makes them more um, secure. They they can the rights to something can be um, put on in the blockchain and and have that uh, level of encryption and immutability that blockchain networks offer. Um, for uh, the value of our things, for, for the, uh, the ownership rights um, that we uh, sometimes don't think about, but, um, you know, can be manipulated or can be changed or can be uh, made null and void um, by third parties. And so creating a more uh, private um, and uh, more personal, immutable um, asset um, and, and rights to something. I think that is why you do it. Um, and then obviously transferring. So storage and transferring. Transferring um, a value in a safer, faster, and hopefully a less risky way. Uh, I think that's why uh, the appeal of, of blockchain once people start to understand what's going on and how it works, that we are kind of on this uh, precipice and, and, and we're already moving into this digital age where, um, uh, you know, instead of uh, the fear and, and you know, uh, of, of things, like I love uh, embracing what the technology can bring to people. Um, I want it to serve everyone. That, that would be my dream. Um, and so with tokenization and what we've seen these crypto companies do um, is has been really encouraging and really exciting um, and trying to reach uh, a global scale uh, with their products. And we're starting to see that. Um, we're starting to see the adoption uh, of, of um, cryptocurrencies and blockchain blockchain technologies and uh, mining and proof of stake and all these different ways to do these things 
uh, happening all around the world, and it's so exciting. Um, want to share more with you about tokenization. So I'm just going to go down a little list here of benefits. Um, one is the, the removal of interme intermediaries or middlemen. Um, there are reasons to have those people, and then there are also reasons why um, those things, um, they increase cost. And that's uh, number two on the list, which is cost reduction. So trying to in or decrease the cost uh, for people by using this type of technology. Uh, speed um, in which uh, the blockchain works depending on the blockchain and depending on when the blocks are created and the data is stored. Uh, accountability, pre-programmed regulatory compliance with terms and conditions being able to be written into it, into code. So uh, without human intervention or people being needing to be there to sign off the paperwork or, or to, to um, push the paperwork through, um, as we're writing these smart contracts, um, that are are governed by the blockchain, we can essentially program money. We can we can program how uh, our assets are traded. We can create conditions as to how uh, our assets move and how we want them to move, and be a little more hands on in control of that. Um, now. In the future, a lot of us are not coders, and so a uh, big part of that is going to be, I think, the cr the creation of smart contracts and the creation of tokens, and how how do I get the pink slip of my car? Uh, and how do I create a token of that, and then put it on the same blockchain that maybe the DMV operates on? Um, just a thought off the top of my head. Um, but those are the types of things that uh, I'm excited to see. Uh, develop and as these big corporations and um, my uh, desire to do this um, series in the first place, uh, again going back uh, into the real business of blockchain, uh, is what uh, groups and corporations are going to be adopting this in the world and um, reading about uh, specific ones and uh, not just countries but by corporations who are trying to bring in blockchain. And as we see a more uh, complete blockchain, uh, we've seen a lot of companies uh, attempt at uh, doing a um, sort of more centralized versions. Um, but we are also seeing uh, the, these incredible crypto companies who are uh, venturing forward and, and creating a, a more decentralized balance and, and how we're going to do these things. And so how tokens will be created and how we will, you know, like what we're seeing with NFTs, like how, how we're able to um, trust the people that are creating those things for us. And there's always um, going to be the issue of accuracy. Just because something is put onto the blockchain doesn't mean that it's necessarily accurate, uh, but rather, now that it's on the blockchain, the consensus mechanism and all of the people who validate uh, all the nodes on the blockchain can make sure that the security of, of, uh, of your assets um, is sound and that uh, you can't be cheated out of it, um, that it can't be stolen from you, it cannot be silenced. And so that is um, very exciting to, to look at the other uh, the other things uh, like decentralization and encryption and then think about uh, us us putting our, our valuables and, and, and understanding the value and how we can trade it digitally with each other uh, globally and um, in, in different ways that have never been able to be done uh, with current paper markets and uh, regulations and, and the things that um, uh, have kind of you know, how we've governed trade up until this point. Um, and I'm so excited through tokenization to see it expand and develop 
And we're also seeing through tokenization, um, take like a house or piece of real estate. Now you were able to break down and in the past, uh, we'd only seen it really with derivatives. Um, but that was really just people's ability to bet or gamble, uh, on whether or not a, a price, uh, was going to go up or down. Uh, whereas now we are actually able to, uh, tokenize, uh, real estate and then, create uh, multiple shares so there can be multiple owners that own a particular house or a piece of real estate or a sports franchise or whatever ideas uh, that you can think of and that is what is so uh, fascinating to me about tokenization is it really is limitless this is something that um going into um you know, intangibles from the rights of something, uh, from branding and patents, names, and again, even ideas. Uh, and so with that, uh, just want to explain real quick uh, about a really important one. Um, and this is a, a way to see um, really how we exchange with each other and, and how how value exchange um, kind of goes and it's in two forms like uh, people uh, there are fungible assets and there are non-fungible assets fungible assets are a um, take Bitcoin and take the US dollar for instance uh, dad just did a video about those two things and talking about intrinsic value um, I uh, even though uh, each Bitcoin is uh, cryptographically different, um, and each dollar bill has a different code on it that, uh, that's that number, it's that moniker for that dollar bill. Um, we understand them to be the same. So my Bitcoin and my digital wallet is as valuable as your Bitcoin and your digital wallet. Just the same as the $1 bill in my pocket is as equal to the one dollar bill in your pocket we understand that we accept that uh that in our belief system and so th so we were able to trade that one to one whereas there is non-fungible or non-fungible tokens that are going to be created like we've seen with nfts uh and the example i did a, a, so much research just a looking into all of this and um, the, the one that everybody always talks about is the Mona Lisa. Um, so the Mona Lisa is not uh, necessarily able to be <laughs> duplicated. It's, it's, it is um, impossible because of the age and the paint and the, the type of canvas. And um, I'm sure you could create a, a, a pretty good doppelganger, but uh, I don't want to see that. Um, I've seen the Mona Lisa up close, and it was absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I'll never forget the the blue green background. Um, but that uh, would require the creation of an NFT, uh, non fungible token, where uh, it cannot be exchanged one to one because of how unique it is. Uh, it, there is no equal to it. Uh, it is its own unique uh, thing. And so uh, in, uh, NFTs are being created now uh, to represent those unique things that can't necessarily be traded one-to-one, -one, like art or music or things of that nature. And so uh, very exciting um, benefits about tokenization. Uh, just, to, just to finish this up, guys, thank you so much for watching today. Um, we're hoping to do faster and cheaper transactions um, without third parties, without time delays, creating efficiency, uh, with how we trade types of tokens. We're also going to see, uh, we see security tokens and utility tokens are, uh, to me the most common, um, security tokens validate ownership of a specific asset, uh, picture like securities. Okay. Security token. Think of like securities. Um, they are the digital representation of an asset when we're talking about tokenization and tokens on the blockchain. Um, they have also been used and very commonly uh, in the past here uh, uh, for fundraising for ICOs. 
Um, and then we also have utility tokens, which provide many functions. Um, big ones to know, paying transaction fees, uh, fueling the consensus program, uh, voting on changes that to, need to be made on the blockchain. Um, those are all, um, you know, governance, things like that. I want to finish on this note, uh, everybody. Um, there's so much to discuss uh, with tokenization. Uh, you can please feel free to go down the rabbit hole and understand it more deeply for yourself. I really just grazed over these ideas. Um, again, it's it's uh, something uh, it's very interesting. I think we're going to see a lot of in the future. Um, and I just want to give you all just uh, kind of a broad stroke of what it is and how it works and why I'm interested in it and uh, see if it's something that's interesting to you. I wrote this down earlier. Uh, this is just spitballing. Um, tokens have now been around for thousands of years. From shells to coins to fiat currencies to hopefully now something very secure and easily traded amongst each other in our evolving digital world. How we expand from the limits of fiat currencies and paper systems will be where we really see blockchain technology take off, in my opinion. Our ability to create tokens and smart contracts on the blockchain and use the robust security of these networks will be very impactful. Watching over the years now, blockchain developers improving on accessibility, security, and scalability have been exciting for someone like me that wants to see a more safe and better way for all of us to trade globally. I'm excited to share about it in the future and as it develops and watch how tokenization will start to change industries all around us and the way we prove ownership and value of everything. And with that, I hope you all have a great week. As always, love you crew. Stay awesome. I'm out. <laughs>